Yes. <laughs> Who's that from? <laughs> from Robin Hood. Oh, that's with right. the foxes. That's right. The best, the best Robin Hood. They could be bandits. Free men bandits? Oh, oh, Robert Cock. Cock. oh, oh God. <laughs> oh, that's I love great. how they <laughs> bastardized that story. Robin Hood robbing from the rich to give to the poor. No, he's just robbing from the government to give the people their money back. <laughs> so he called the government the rich. No. Something fundamentally wrong with that. <laughs> Especially when uh, we're represented. They already get paid too much as it is. Oh, lobbyists. Oh man, I wanted to read that thing that I sent you. You should, because I did Look, Can I look at it on your phone? <coughs> yeah. See if it thinks I'm you. <coughs> you dead? Yeah. I dead. Uh, we were listening to Christmas music earlier. Oh, such good music. Christmas time's the best time. You know, I think Christmas is my favorite holiday, but a close second is Thanksgiving. It's because we're fat. It's not about food. It's about being thankful. Like, I love that. <laughs> we have a whole holiday just about being thankful. And it's not a religious holiday. It's a, a state holiday. I'm just like, yeah. That's right, Roxy. That's right, dog. Oh, did you like the little bird flipping emoji that I sent you? Yeah, I didn't understand it. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were, like, proposing something or... Uh. <laughs> okay. I guess in your defense, I didn't say no homo. <laughs> you shouldn't have to say no homo. Only homo. Apparently, speakers. I should. <laughs> oh, my uncle was telling me how you have to. Um, he's like, only people who are gay can't joke about being gay. <laughs> It's like if, if you if you have a hard time joking about it, then you might be worried about yourself. Um, so I was looking at, I wanted to understand what the actual definition of lobbyists was. I was looking at it because both me and Mitch wrote um, our representatives, uh, several representatives this week. Um, maybe we'll talk about that later. But I was just thinking about lobbying and, oh, first off, welcome to episode 16, sweet 16. Yep. The hope rises. The hope's rising. Of elders rising. <coughs> no! Dang it! Fixed. Nope. Not yet. Damn you, technology. Don't do it on camera so they can see your password. But I came to this website. This is lobbyit.com. 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 This is their pricing tiers for being a lobbyist. So, and this is their sales pitch. And after writing our representatives and thinking, I sure hope that this gets seen by who, like our representatives, you know, but, but at knowing that it's, it's, likely, it's likely not going to be seen by anybody. Why would they watch something about the Constitution? No, we didn't. No, not this. I'm talking oh. about our the the letters that we wrote. Oh. The letters, specific letters that we wrote to them. Oh. Okay. This Either is way. this is what lobbyist lobbyit.com says in their in their pricing. Here's their sales pitch. It says, "Today, access to your elected officials has never been more important, yet more inaccessible. Most lobbying firms charge as much as fifteen thousand dollars as a minimum retainer." with the entire process reaching $50,000 per month for more f uh, month or more for full advocacy services. Think of that like just we'll we'll advocate your service meaning we don't care at all we just want the money. It's like that's just a job and that, that's so it's so fundamentally like enraging. Okay, continuing on. This isn't even the bad part either. Advo um so Fifty thousand per month or we, or more for full advocacy services, with many of their build for activities remaining largely undefined. Unlike the balance of the government affairs in industry, however, lobby it is accountable 
to our clients each and every month. Below you will find our clearly defined pricing tier and the services included within each. While lobbyists packages package tiers provide the greatest the greatest combined value, we do offer service a la carte depending on client needs and you will find those listed out below as well. And it's like $9,995 a month. That's tier one. It's basically $2,000, $3,000, $5,500, $8,000, $8, and, um, and then the business development, and then a la carte services. And it's just like it goes through this this for $900 a month, almost $1,000 a month, $990, $995, that's what it is. Um, initial con consultation to understand your needs and issues. And it's just like receipt of con congressional climate, daily emails, legislature, legislative alert, issue alerts, as appropriate, personal, personally tailored month reports, easy access to both K Street and Capitol Hill offices, as well as all of our staff. And it's just like the fact that we have a representative. Um, Republic. We we vote on people who represent us, and to get access to them, you have to go through lobbyists, and you have to go through like it's it's just like it's it's so infuriating. You have to pay money for your voice to be heard. For those of you who play phone games, little okay. games on your phone, or or any kind of video game, you think of like the microtransaction culture where it's pay to win. That's what our government has. That, that's where our government has become, like pay to win. You know, that's why. That's why they have so many different um, offices that they. So many different offices. The, that's why they've they've made it so that you don't have as much. There's so much distance between you and your representative. Um, if you can get the whole state to vote for uh, a senator all at once, then the center is not beholden to anyone or any small group of individuals who has personal access to them. Before with the caucus system here in Utah, when the caucuses got together, the people that you as a, as a community voted on someone to be part of the leader of your group, they went and the senators had to meet them and had to get to know them personally. And so there was some senator has to pay to get their name recognition out there so that the common person will recognize the name. And that's the game of it. And if you recognize the name, you, they win. And it's like, it's it's very, it's it's just corrupt. It's, you know, the whole taxation without representation? Well, we've got a corrupt representation. That's, we have representation without moral, ethical, or competent representation. Yeah. That being aside the fact of, like, the, the voting system being so, un, under so much turmoil. Yeah. China. Russia. And they're not on the side that everybody likes to say that they're on. China and Russia? Yeah. You mean they're communists? They're communists. What side does everybody like to say they're on? Donald Trump's side. They help they help Trump win. <laughs> what a stupid thing. If you still believe that, then it's projection. It really is. It's projection. It always is. Projection's so interesting. And if you don't understand what projection is, it's when you see in others the things that you're doing yourselves. You see in others, and, and it happens on so many different levels. It happens like on religious levels, it happens spiritually, it happens like um, socially and attitudes and stuff. You you notice in others the things that you are, are most guilty of, and it happens like in politics, people who don't want to be caught doing something, they accuse their their um, adversary of doing that thing that they don't want to be caught doing, and it's it's very effective because it's like even if you can't prove anything, creating that shadow of the doubt in the people who might support that that opposition is is invaluable. And that's what dishonesty gets us. People not knowing who to trust. Trust is slow to build and easy to break. That's unless, 
unless you're in the political political realm, then people really don't care. I think that's the biggest problem. People just don't really care anymore. People just accept it as, well, this is just the way that things are, and they have allowed these corrupt bureaucrats and statists to um, manipulate the way that we think and we view things. That this is how government works. Well, this is just the way things are now. And a fair chunk of the American people just accept that. It's just the way things are. Think of the people you know that you work with that are, their whole job is to justify why they have a job. And it's like, oh, I did this, and look how much good this did for this. And it's like, there are people that, that's that, their, their whole, like, 80% of their time spent is to justify the fact that they are not fired. And that's where most of bureaucracy in our government is. You look at how much time is spent justifying how, how, the IRS does things or how school systems do things or how like how much time the is VA? like the VA does things yeah any any government organization is like there's and there's there's this funny balance because we do I mean you do get people in there that are good people who are trying to like question and do do right by people and trying they're, they're honorable people in there but they're drowned out by everything else by the rest of the bureaucracy well yeah. and also the other problem is with groups like the IRS and the VA and you know these government agencies people don't get fired it's very hard to get fired people don't get fired so I mean there's really and they still get their raises their jobs pretty much guaranteed so there's no risk and no incentive to do or be better so I mean the basic it's a good example of communism or socialism when you remove um, personal responsibility no not personal responsibility personal ownership no my mind went, went blank um, I forgot it's gone well I wanted to talk about communism and socialism and the united order and like the word the call of consecration a little bit so that's one of the things i was thinking about talking about today because a lot of members of the church get this confused so if you're unfamiliar with it there was a time when the the church lived um the law of consecration is what it's called and they called it the united order i mean i think there's been two or three different times where it's been started um the main time that it was really effective was when the saints came here to utah and uh it, it, there was there was a certain communities um, I think I think I don't remember that I think Brigham was one that that lasted one of the longest um, the Brigham community if I remember right but um, there's there's certain um, communities that they they lived what is called the United Order or the Law of Consecration where the, it was a, everything was in common and people received on their needs and um, and it it had very like if you just taking a bird's eye view it looked a lot like communism or a lot like give everything to the church or the state or however you want to call it and then they'll give you what you need and so a lot of people get confused about like oh well if that's the the way the church does it you know there's something good in communism and the the thing is that is the, we believe that when Christ comes, he's going to be a um, uh, ruler. He's going to be the p king of kings, you know, and that's both political and religious. And when Christ is at the head, the organization that he has will be perfect and it'll be his organization. Now, with the United Order specifically um, or the law of consecration, you you basically agency is the biggest key factor in that people have to choose to accept it and then the second thing is it needs to have be be led in righteousness it needs to be led by someone who's at, if ideally by christ but if where christ is not exactly accessible all everywhere um on a local level for for your leadership it needs to be led by someone who's following him and 
communism is the dark sister, I guess you could say. The it's it communism <coughs> for communism to work, it has to be enforced because no, you don't get that you pe you have to take away people's agency because anybody who who doesn't agree to it is disrupting the system, and then it's led by dictators. It's led by people who are not um, good faith actors. I remember what I was going to say. When you remove the incentive to do and be better, then people won't do and be better. For example, communism, you're, you know, making the same, mm -hmm. you're getting the same as everybody else. What incentive do you have to work harder or be better when ultimately you're just the same? The but that goes along with what you were saying. Mm -hmm. So we're still on the same page this time when I remember. <laughs> the interesting thing, so, and, and I do, my wife, she was born to a country that was communistic. The communism fell on her country when she was like two or three. But it's still, they basically... Um, the remnants remain for a long time. Well, they're still there today. There's a communist party yeah. that's, I think, been voted into power now. Or at least at some point has well, and then the dictator's first-hand man became the new president. <laughs> it's like, oh, great. And all of the, basically most of the state officials... You mean like going from Cox, or from Herbert to Cox? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, um, the thing that's so, that I find interesting is the way that the common people had to get by during communism is they had to, they had to basically be corrupt they, it encourages corruption because you you can't get by with what the state if like if you're honest and just try and try and get by with what the state wants you to have it's not going to work because the state they don't give people enough to live on and so you have to have other means of like okay I don't have a car, but I'm gonna I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna apply for these car these gasoline rations, and then I can take my gasoline rations and go to the um, go to the farmers who actually need the gasoline, and I'll trade food f to, to them directly, or I'll I'll trade you know cigarettes to these police officers to let me get by without having to do this, or you know you, you the the bribery is so that's how people got by. And, and if they didn't do that, then they starved. Like, they, 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 they had to starve. And so communism morally bankrupts your, your people on a, on a personal level, as well as, like, harms them in their... their it, it tries to kill their hope. It tries to kill um, any hope that they have for a better life. And that's one of the reasons why it's so against religion, is because the highest power needs to be to the state... And if you ha put your higher, a higher power to God, or if you if you think that there's something more important than the state, then then you're 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 not drinking the Kool Aid, and they can't have that. All men desire power. Man's the same now as he's ever. Been. And we need to accept that for what it is. And a lot of people get like discouraged by that, but it's actually really good because you look at like how you look at like how we beat as a, a Christianity. I'm talking about Christianity as a whole. A lot of people have negative views of the Dark Ages, and a lot of people. I mean, there was some bad stuff in the Dark Ages, but there was some really good stuff where Christianity came out of a lot of really bad um, cultures. You think of like the Germanic culture and the the Anglo, the Druids of England and stuff like that. Uh, it wasn't England; it was the Saxon or whatever. I don't remember, but there there was a lot of barbarism that droids, not droids. No, this is not this is not a galaxy far, far away and a hope long, long ago. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, but how do we beat how do we beat the evils that we're seeing today? Same way we beat them a long time ago. A lot of people claim that that Christianity, or not Christianity, religion, a lot of atheists claim that religion is the cause of a lot of war. It's like, no, that's, that's, I mean, that can be true in some circumstances. A lot of wars have been fought because of religion, yes. But, but I don't think that's the main theme anymore. 
It hasn't been for a long time. A long time. And then you think of like the even the Crusades and stuff like that. The Crusades were they're so much overblown by ooh, what like it's just uh, I would I would spout off information that I can remember tingling my head, but like thinking of like the how the Muslims came into the the Span the Spanish um, they came into Spain and. The Christians of Spain fought the Muslims that came in, and it took like 300 years. And the the yeah, the Crusades, it was bad, but it wasn't. It was most conflicts, and it, and the conflict was over like 300 years. I want to say it was like it was. Yeah, here, here's where I'm probably... The Crusades? The Crusades. The, the death tolls of the Crusades were like... 300 people per... Per every like five years or something like that. It was like... I don't know. I don't remember. But that's the thing is like... When you look at... When you look at the power that Satan yields, or that he wields... Just shy of 200 years. And does it have death tolls there? Uh, maybe. So it was almost 200 years. You're either laughing or in pain. Or laughing about pain. What do you do? Like, shut up, Fred. You're hurting my feelings. Too sensitive. <laughs> I'm not seeing any death tolls. I'd have to look them up, but if I remember right, it's it's far, far less of a impactful than Hollywood would have you believe, and most. Look it up yourself. My phone's over there. Not you. Oh yeah, you people. Stick it, right? <laughs> um, but the thing that the thing that I was I was kind of getting at though is. A lot of the a lot of the corruption and a lot of the things that that control us are based off of our own passions are based off of our own like oh you you want the convenience of, of this or oh you want the system that does this or you know it's like if we just if we just become self-sufficient if we just kind of do our own thing it loses all of its appeal and its power it loses everything and that's that's where our country is is turning from from that independence, be, that independent spirit, to that commodity and that convenience. The government hates self-sufficiency. The government wants to be your baby mama. Mm -hmm. I suspect that's a big reason why they don't want people to have their wood-burning stoves and collect rainwater and stuff like that. They'll never say it, and they'll never admit it, but I'll be willing to bet that's a big part of it. Yeah. Because it's all about control. It's all about power. Thinking that they're... with the New World Order or whatever they're trying to help usher in, thinking that they're going to be, you know, part of the high class, part of, you know, part of the rulers, <laughs> and they're not going to be, but they convince themselves that they will be, and that they're more powerful and more important than you and I. If you look at any, if you do any kind of looking up at, like, the Great Reset, there's, there's a global initiative to try and have this reset of humanity, and... There's a lot of different um, actors that are trying to to be in play. You've got um, a lot of, of pharmaceutical. You've got a lot of like world, new world order type. Like you know the whole conspiracy thing. It's like not really a conspiracy. It's it's not a conspiracy at all. It's just people. People they they openly publish their their meetings and stuff like that. It's just like these these a lot of a lot of people who are very powerful are 
trying to make this, um, trying to, to have a, a reset where they can kind of control the, the layman. And there will be a reset one way or another, but it doesn't have to be of their doing or their making. We as people, we can reset ourselves. We can reset ourselves in, in independence and we can reset ourselves in, in being um, self-sufficient. And that's like, there's, there's, uh, that's what I think, um, when, when I think of the whole, and, and to be specific, I think it's what, 2023 is what they're aiming for, or their projection, projection days, are you familiar with this at all? No, I've been meaning to watch some stuff on the Great Reset, but I haven't. Yeah, their projection is like 2023, if I remember right, or 2022, or something like that. And you look at like how the, the whole Agenda 21, it was based around 2000. 21 and a lot of there, like there was a lot of um, hype around that a few years ago yes. I know Glenn Beck did a lot of like talking teamwork. about it and stuff like that teamwork makes the dream work and that's kind of been from what I understand and again I'm I don't consider myself I, I'm just a layman you know I don't I don't I I don't consider myself super in the know I just have, have done a decent bit of, of poking around and looking, but it seems like the um, the Great Reset is there. They, they've kind of uh, pushed it back to from 2021 to I think 2023, and they're trying to they're trying to have a financial reset. They're trying to have a um, like a what do you call it? A societal reset. A societal reset, but it's 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 there's there's like several different planes of, of resetting. There's like there's like there's like finance. There's the um, the pharmaceutical industries. There's like I, I I don't remember all the details, but it's just like some of it some of it is probably conspiracy and stuff like that. But a lot of it is like you know there are we know that just if you just read the Book of Mormon, secret combinations are key in the Book of Mormon, and it's like you know you know that the, there's bad stuff out there. You don't have to know every. You don't have to know every little detail or be correct on every little detail to realize that people are bad. People are going to try to do bad things. That's not shocking. That's not new. It's never been new. Bad people are always going to try and do bad things. And the way that you protect yourself against that is by being good. Goodness will always repel bad. Darkness cannot exist where the light is. And that's why it's so important to demand transparency from our representatives I think that I, I was just thinking about it this week how how cool it would be to have a live feed of our representatives whenever they're um, acting in an official capacity I gave you loves go away <laughs> did you see that oh man come here dog I know I know he doesn't understand. Understand all too well. I have two dogs. He thinks he understands. They're both always trying to get my attention. And my children. I'm gonna get you a cat. The nerve. They you can get us a cat, it'll just die like the others. Cats are stupid. Cats are useful where I live. Well, if they're mouser cats and they keep them outside for the most part, then they're awesome. The last few cats I've had have thought they were dogs. What? Yeah. That sounds like not a not terrible cat. My daughter had a cat a few years ago. And it, I swear, it thought it was a dog. <laughs> um, I would come home from work. Mm -hmm. And the cat would hear my truck pull up. And I'd see it come running from around the back of the house. And come up by the door and sit and wait for me to get out of my truck. <laughs> and other times I'd hop in my truck to go into town or whatever mm -hmm. and the cat would come running and he'd jump in the back of the truck and go into town with me. <laughs> and it would always wait there in the bed of my truck. That's awesome. And then we'd get home and he'd jump out. That's awesome. He was a pretty good cat. I think he got ran over. Mm. Cats don't last very long at my house. <laughs> Either the neighbor kills him, I suspect, or... You think the neighbor kills him on purpose? Yeah. Um, or, <laughs> in the instance with one of our last cats, the Al got it. <laughs> oh, man. 
I didn't see it. That's also a speculation. <laughs> but there was now hanging around. And then the next day, there was a cat not hanging around. Wow. It was just a little kitty. Oh. I liked it too. It was black. He climb up on my arm. He climb across my chest and put his tail up under my nose like a mustache. <laughs> Cats aren't terrible. Feral cats. Or the really arrogant ones. Arrogant house cats? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, guess what, cat? Do you have. Can you create electricity? Shove it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're talking of uh, being good. Um, and I. And like I said. Darkness cannot exist where there's light. And look at it like with a fire. The heat drives away the cold. Yeah. Look at the things that always prevail. Unless it's black hole, then gra the crushing gravity will defeat light. But, I mean, that's kind of a... Neither here nor there. <laughs> Black hole. Black hole. God Just like hole. Kamala Harris. <laughs> oh. We're not supposed to use whore references when it comes to her. She got where she was playing second fiddle to a dementia riddled old man. The the right way. Not by sleeping her way to the top. Whore. <coughs> <coughs> What? That's what? Just saying. <laughs> I mean, to each their own. You want to get to the top by sleeping your way there, then cool. But, I mean, don't talk about how qualified you are when you couldn't even pass the bar and had to sleep with somebody to get an, an appointment. Willie Brown. <coughs> 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 I don't know anything about Kamala Harris. She's a bitch. <laughs> Except for, I did hear that she... She has black eyes. Black you look eyes? At black eyes. Like, you look at pictures of her, and when she's laughing and stuff, she looks like Satan. Like, her eyes are completely black, and you're like, oh, wow. Which leads me to my conspiracy theory that the, the Church of the Harlot, or whatever, mm -hmm. um, the Whore of the Earth... She might be it. <laughs> we talked about that last week. Uh, you know, the, the 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 whore of the earth being the church or the, the church of the devil. Yeah, being government mm -hmm. it makes perfect sense, and maybe it's more. I don't know. Maybe it's more literal than we think. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I'm just here for the ride like you. <laughs> just like all of you. We're all in this together. It's funny because like so much of the so much of the um so much of the power that people have is just what like you think they have. Like in in just power dynamics. If you're if you're even at like uh, in a work setting or in a, a, just social settings, uh, some power that people hold is actual power. It's like okay, if you don't do it, they say they're going to fire you. There's there's power there. But a lot of the power that people hold is like you don't want to disappoint them, or you don't want to you don't want to be you don't want to stick out. You want well, social conformity. My speciality. <laughs> when when it's someone that you. Re that's understandable. Like that's like a good, healthy way to do to to. That's a healthy way to respect to give someone power. Is like this is someone who I respect and I don't want to disappoint them. But if it's like someone who's going to guilt trip you and try and make you feel like a terrible person or something like that, and you don't want to, you don't want them to make you feel bad. Then it's just. <laughs> 
What? Would you like? Is there something you would like? <laughs> that's that's where it's like that's where it's like that power relies on consent. Silence is consent. <laughs> Bill Cosby. I'll never get it over that. <laughs> if you don't know the meme, you should try and look up Bill Cosby meme saying silence is consent. Oh man, Fred. I'm gonna do it again. Well, just wait a second. One. Just wait. No. Oh. Fine, you know what, Fred? Just do whatever, okay? <laughs> you just do whatever your little heart desires. Oh, oh look at that. Those are freaking awesome coals. I love fire. But I pet you. Go away. Nailed it. No. <clears throat> no, you really kind of didn't. Shit. Is that um DuckTales? Yeah, the original one, not the stupid gay ass new one. Is there a new one? Yeah. Like how new? It's on Disney Plus. No, I'm not I'm not gonna watch it. My kids like that one better than the old one. I'm like Pfft. Yeah. Careful, that's hot dog. Hot dog. <laughs> No. You're not as jumpy as Russell. Russell will do that. He'll be sniffing something. I'll come up and I'll pat him on the side like that. He <laughs> about jumps out of his skin. Foxy's got a nice fat belly. Do you hear other dogs barking? So, we talked about... Uh, But we wrote our representatives. Go away. Get. No. Get. You don't know what get means, does you? Do you don't? No. Don't know what get means, do you? Does you? We didn't actually say what we said, though. Why we read? Why yeah. we wrote them? And that's what I was getting to. Um. So. Let's see what? What's the date today? The nineteenth. Yeah. I think so. So today is December nineteenth. And in the last, really it's been the last week, um, the ATF has been going after um, a company called Polymer 80 to provide 80% um, low receivers for rifles. They also have an 80% pistol frame. And these are perfectly legal. You can have these things sent straight to your house. You finish. You still have to you, like mill them, don't yeah. you? Yeah, it's, it's, you, have, it's a, you have to do the finish work. It's a block of uh, aluminum usually, right? Or polymer. Or polymer. Yeah, and then you do the you do the finish work. It's eighty percent complete. You just have to finish milling out and fitting everything. And this is perfectly legal. It's you can build up to two firearms yourself a year. I think, and I think that's two rifles and two pistols that you could build. <laughs> Either way, I mean that's really your. How do they irrelevant. make the de determination though? Like, you're allowed to build this for yourself. I build whatever the hell I want, whenever I want, and I can build however many I want. The ATF. But, uh, anyway. Um, so yeah, you get these things sent to your house, and, you know, Polymer 80 had a, you know, they have to submit their plans and what they're doing to the ATF, and the ATF says, yeah, okay. And so they said yes to um, these polymer frame polymer frames that you do the finish work on then you put all your parts together and then you go shoot well polymer 80 started doing what's called a buy build shoot kit and it's a complete kit it has everything that you need so it has like uh, and and that runs off of uh, generation 3 Glock internals and stuff like that. Um, their pattern. Mm -hmm. What I did was instead of buying your frame and then having to source all your parts from everywhere else, and you know, for a lot of people, you just ultimately forgetting everything. 
forgetting something here or there. Mm -hmm. They sold an entire kit, so it had everything you needed. It had the trigger group, it had the slide locking block, um, you know, trigger. You, every, you every, still had to take the metal and mill yeah. it out and stuff, though, right? Well, the polymer. Yeah, yeah that, you'd, that, have, the polymer. you'd have to mill that stuff out. You'd have to do the finish work. And so it's still, it's not a complete firearm. Mm -hmm. You have a kit that will allow you to have a complete firearm when you're done. Mm -hmm. And so, but where it's not, you know, complete, it doesn't have a firearm. Mm -hmm. Well, the ATF, just the frame, but where you're selling a complete kit, this constitutes a firearm and you're in violation of the loss. Um, you know, transporting firearms across state lines, and to, not having serial numbers on your stuff. And to be clear, you can't take that kit and put it together just the way that it is to make a firearm. No, you it can't. Won't, it, it won't there's, go together. There's no way. It's like taking a chunk of metal that has a few things cut out of it. Yeah. And then trying to put the internals on a it. A jigsaw it, puzzle together that's not but, cut. Exactly, it's not <laughs> cut out. But. So, yeah, the ATS just like, yeah, well, this constitutes a firearm now. You know, an unelected agency just making determinations and laws as they see, as they see fit. And it should be, you know, pretty alarming to everybody that yeah. they can just do that. And then they didn't they, ha aren't they trying to make people felons as well that have no, uh, well, it's, so what they're doing with the pistol braces is, their argument is, um, people are using these pistol braces to skirt the short barrel rifle law. Why is there a short barrel rifle law? Because they, th they thought that they had the authority to ban them. This comes from, you know, um, during the time of the, you know, John Dillinger, Babyface Nelson, the bank robbers, and the prohibition and stuff where everybody's running around wreaking havoc with Tommy guns and BARs and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And you could just buy those over the counter at your local gun shop or hardware store or even have it mailed to your house. Mm -hmm. A machine gun. Yeah. And so they fear legislated that. Oh, and they said. So this would have been Roaring Twenties time frame. Thirties. It was in the thirties? Yeah. Um, I believe the National Firearms pa Act passed in 1934. And so their, their solution to try and make it less um, accessible, f to, to restrict the accessibility of firearms, is to say... June 26, 1934. Short barrel... Um, short barrel rifles are illegal. Yeah, because people will undoubtedly use them to uh, commit crimes. So, I actually have one of my pistols here. I'll go grab it and show show exactly what I'm talking about and what it means. Um, and you can see, even though... Wait, wait, because you don't have your mic on, so explaining it won't be... He said you could see even though, but I think you could hear that. Power of my mouth is... He says he's sometimes likes to dress in women's clothing. What? I said that you you said that you sometimes like to dress in women's clothing. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Okay, so we have here, this is education time, we have here my 12 and a half inch AR pistol. This, if it had a stock on it instead of the, the pistol brace, right here. Oh, dog. You're a paley ass today, Roxy. <laughs> No, get. Oh, stay by Okay, anyway. So, this is a 12 and a half inch barrel AR. If it had a stock, this would be a short barrel rifle. This is really not that 
short, not that small. Even if I take the brace and collapse it all the way, it's still, you know, not that small. I'm gonna have a hard time finding a way to conceal this to rob a bank or a store or anything. So what is a, uh, what is a, considered not short anymore? Because that's 16 what? 16 inches. So it has to be as, at least 16 inches 16 long? 16 inch barrel on a rifle. And that's what, 18 on inches? a shotgun. This is 12 and a half. 12 and a half? Yeah. And one of their things they're saying is, you know, it depends on how it's set up. Does it have a secondary grip on it like this? Does it have attachments like my, like my light? And your optics. And I have a little flip to the side magnifier here so that I have three power so I could see a little bit better for some farther shots. So if the ATF got a hold of this, if what they're trying to do succeeds and passes, they would more than likely rule this as a short barreled rifle. But I mean, the fact remains, this is not a stock. This is a pistol brace. Your arms, you undo this, you just put your arm through, and it's supposed to, you know, make it easier for one-handed shooting. And before the pistol braces, the ATF had never clarified. They had never said that there was a wrong way to, shul to fire a pistol. And now, all of a sudden, there is. And there's been, there's been arguments and issues with the ATF and the pistol braces because people are stupid and we're asking the ATF, you know, can I, can I shoulder this instead of just doing it and not bringing any attention to it? Let's ask if this is okay. Anyway, their argument is, you know, it's for, for skirting the registering it as, as a short barreled rifle. I'm not going to say particularly particularly or exactly why I decided to build a pistol whether or not it was to skirt or if it was so I could have a better cheek weld because well, right here it's not touching my shoulder it's just ch touching my cheek so I had three points of contact one two three and doesn't that shoot nines as well? Nine millimeters? No, this is a 5.56. Five, oh. You're thinking about my little nine millimeter AK. Yeah. So that's what they're talking about. They're talking about this little piece right here. And just owning this and having this set up as it is, when I bought everything legally and followed the law in good faith, if they so choose, they could make me a felon overnight. That's some dangerous power for people to have. So that's why you should fight, fight it. And this is this is something that for those of you who don't, who aren't familiar with the gun industry, literally millions of people have this type of a setup. Yeah, pistol braces have been around for over a decade. Yeah. And it's like, they're, they're potentially going to make millions of people felons for buying something legally and doing it the right way. Well, allegedly, one of the things that they're saying is um, they, may, they may have an expedited process for you if you have a brace-equipped firearm. Um, they may... Go away, you're bothering me. Um, I don't even like giving my own dogs that much love. <laughs> um, they may expedite the process and waive the, the registration fee of $200 so that I could register that as a short barreled rifle and put a stock on it, which makes things a little bit better, but I mean, the fact that I can't just have a short barreled rifle anyway is a gross infringement on my rights because government doesn't grant my, grant my rights, they were granted to me by my creator. Anyway, so we're talking about stupid technicalities here and yeah, their whole argument is, well, people might be using that to skirt the short barreled rifle law so they're just coming up with new things and 
and whatnot to, to have more control. The ATF, I believe, is trying to, if, if the election results aren't overturned and, or they're not reined in and brought into control or disbanded, they're going to relive their glory era of the 90s where they just kill innocent Americans for, you know, not following what they believe is law. Or in the case of, of Waco, just, you know, killing, ended up killing over 70 innocent Americans over no proof of a crime ever, ever having been committed. It was really over 70? Mm-hmm. Oh. And there was no proof of a crime having been committed. And at Ruby Ridge, they shot Randy Weaver's son and his wife over a quarter of an inch on a shotgun barrel. Really? And that's just, you, you look at it and you can see where it's heading when you have a rogue agency like this. I th the ATF just needs to be disbanded because it's a completely unconstitutional agency. It serves no purpose other than to infringe on the rights of the citizens. <coughs> and, when, and when you have the politicians say that, and you know, the, the Second Amendment doesn't mean, you know, that you can own whatever you want, it, it does. It, Look we've, at the way we've that, covered this. The way that it's very e even written is shall not be infringed. Yeah, I'm dumb and I know what that means. That means it means shouldn't be stopped. So if I say you're right to um, give me give me something that'd be fun to be a right. Uh, your right to breathe. Yeah. Your right to breathe should not be stopped. That means the government does not have the authority to stop you from breathing. Or how much oxygen you can take in. But that doesn't mean you are only allowed to breathe as much as your lungs can hold. That doesn't mean you're only allowed to breathe while you're above water. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there, there, saying that, oh, the, the Second Amendment doesn't mean that you can have machine guns machine and explosives. Guns and, and yeah. That's, that's incorrect. Not only is it incorrect, like, technically, but it's also, it's very weak it's very weak as an individual to to want to give away your your own protection your own mm -hmm. way of 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 keeping yourself protected because you're too scared of responsibility that's that's, that's really what it boils down it. to that's what the crux of it is responsibility um because the argument is that me owning guns puts somebody else's life in danger well, no, not really. I mean, there's there's a lot of variables here. House, then yes, my firearm puts your life in jeopardy, but you made the choice to break into my house. At this point, I'm the victim. Um, or somebody could steal it and, you know, they could shoot a bunch of people with it, whatever. And, but that's not really that's not really the case that's not how this argument works the argument about the Second Amendment is um, for me to violate your rights would be for me to try and take that away from you because you have the same right to go to a store and buy the weapons system of your choice and you also have the freedom to seek out the knowledge and the training and the safety practices to be able to employ those. You can also, even though you shouldn't have to, you can get your concealed weapons permit. And so you have all these tools to protect yourself from gun violence, yet you refuse to take those precautions. You refuse to do all those things to protect yourself. And I'm the bad guy because you didn't do what you could. That's what freedom is. You have the freedom to take care of yourself and... Uh oh. That's <laughs> alright. It's, it's okay, I gave it to you anyway. I know. <laughs> it was free. It was. 
not for you, but for me it was. I don't know where that came from. It might have been free to me too. Um, the thing that, <laughs> the thing that really makes me think of though is you think of like old wet, wild wild west cowboys era era right you think of like oh we don't want to go back to that you, a lot of people are like oh that's it was so dangerous like who, who might makes right and stuff like that and like there is a sense of truth to that a, a little bit but it, in a large part i think it's incorrect because you think of how um bad guys people who want to do bad things are going to do bad things they're going to do bad things regardless of what where it's at but when everybody when everybody has the ability to defend themselves, any bad guy is going to think twice about doing something wrong to anybody else. Mm -hmm. It's an armed society is a polite society is a common saying, but it's really true. Because of this. Yeah, it's because you don't want any misunderstanding. You don't want anybody to accidentally um, take your intent incorrectly and have reason to, to harm you. And you don't want to give them that reason, but you also aren't going to take any anybody trying to to take advantage of your family. You're not going to put up with it. And it's like it holds ourselves responsible to each other. Mm -hmm. And it makes me think of like the whole, you know, I, I I don't know, I don't, I wonder the differences between police forces of the olden, like the the wild wild west days and our days now. You know what I mean? It feels like there'd be a lot more onus on police nowadays because people can't defend themselves like they could before. Or won't. Or, or won't. won't. Yeah, yeah. And the, the, the beauty of guns is that it's the ultimate equalizer. Just as lethal as... Me. I was thinking somebody more in their prime, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> but yeah, it's called the Great Equalizer for a reason. You're responsible for your own safety. And a granny can be just as, as lethal as Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris is kind of a granny anymore. Except for he's a dude. Yeah. But he's old. Dude, there's a story about Chuck Norris. Lone Wolf McQuaid. It's a terrible movie of his. I had not seen I don't remember it. You're not missing anything. <laughs> there's a story. He came here to Utah, you know, and he did, like, these Maverick tour thing. Well, there was this one kid that had Down syndrome, and I think he was down in, like, Centerville or something like that. Is his name Fred? No. Christensen? No. That would make a lot of sense. <laughs> well, he, um, he... Loves Chuck Norris and like you, he, he absolutely loves Chuck Norris and he was like he would like do his workout routines based off of Chuck Norris and he would do like he, he loved he just one of those that was that was his one his of the thing. his thing yeah he loved Chuck Norris well Chuck Norris he heard about this kid and he um, when he came here to Utah to do the the what do you call it the tour for Maverick, whatever, is his promotional thing that he, you know, I'm sure he's paid for and all that. Um, the church and Maverick are in a turf war. They are? <laughs> yeah. They're trying to see who can build more faster. <laughs> Everywhere you look, there's either a Maverick or a church. <laughs> and where you look and there isn't a Maverick or a church, one's going up. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> well... Um, so he, he calls this, he calls this kid up when he's here and he's like, Hey, could I, could I come over and visit? And the, he, he went and visited the kid and like, they thought, Oh, awesome. You know, and they thought that he was going to do like some press, you know, come take a picture, meet him, sign an autograph, you know, he didn't bring any press or anything. Nobody really knew about it. I've heard Chuck Norris is pretty, up, uh, up and up dude. He, you mean like out, like upstanding? Yeah, yeah, that's what I've, that's what I've heard too. But like he, I would he, hope so because he's a terrible actor. <laughs> he, um, he, he stayed and did a workout um, with that kid, and he really? spent the whole afternoon with the kid, like 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 four or five hours, just just hanging out with the kid, you know. And they went and did a workout. They went to like a, a boxing, they, like I, I don't know. They went to a gym or something, and they did a workout together. And they, and and they just he sat and talked, and they played video games or something like that. Whatever the kid wanted to do. 
And it was like four hours or five hours, you know, just hanging out with this kid. That's awesome. And it's just like, man, that's awesome. My my uh -uh. my mom told me, because I guess with one of the groups for my little sister, um, she knew like the um, the mom or I don't know. He just ate a hot coal. coal. Yep, dogs are stupid. <laughs> oh. I love dogs, I really do. I'm just not in the mood to pet or play with her today. That's fine. When dogs can't play, they get awful needy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and my my letter to Trump that I that I wrote to him was uh, the ATF needs to either be reined in or disbanded. And I told him I said there couldn't be a more devastating blow to the Democrats and their plans for gun control than disbanding the ATF, which constitutionally is the right thing to do. Yeah. But he's a spiteful type of person, like me. And so. I suspect that's probably true. Hmm. I also um, basically told him to. If he doesn't, if if he doesn't defend the Constitution, well, who does he think will? It's like I know the answer to this. I told Romney it was time for him to finally do the right thing. One of my brothers loves Mitt Romney. He really does? Man. It's interesting because you want to you want to give people a benefit of the doubt and when people when people um, use your your innate goodness to their advantage, it should be like a red flag to everyone. But it's also like so sometimes it's so close to you want to believe like the, the intent you want to you want to overlook the the time and time again of the betrayal and the and the corruption and stuff like that and it's just like oh well it could possibly not be his fault or it could possibly you know and it's just like no there's 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 no chance you, you don't be a sucker don't don't be a sucker and maybe that makes me a cynic but hey that's me. <laughs> yeah, Romney's is very douchey. It doesn't pass the smell test. <laughs> None of them do. My mom likes Mike Lee. I used to. Mike Lee, for the most part, has done a pretty good job, but I mean, still. I used to like him. The thing that really bothers me about Mike Lee is like, I, I, I hate how people will appeal to like a moral high ground and then do things that are against the, <laughs> the their, what they claim to be appealing to. Yeah. And the fact that Mike Lee has this bill that is for bringing in foreign workers in a time when American workers need jobs, American workers are, American businesses are closed down. That just it's it's so wrong. And 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 as like every politician does this, where they're like, oh look how good I am, look at all these good things I do. And it's, I want to bring more people into our country of prosperity. Yeah, but you can't open your business. You're not allowed to have people to pay you for the goods and services you provide. I hate it all. And it really comes down to just consent. All we have to do is just not consent. Mm-hmm. And it's but like... we have to... When we do it individually, we just get picked off. The whole... Either we hang together or we hang individually is just as true now as it was back in... 1776 Tyrants and patriots all hang the same 
and Patriots Patriots are the ones that what was that saying I think you sent it to me but basically basically before Patriots are who do what's right before it's popular oh Oh, let me find it. Got more? I don't care. Not on my side. My side's hot. I need to scoot my chair back. It's a great day. It's all white and snowy and pretty. Fire poker for a minute? Yes. No. Jackass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me find it. Phones are really quite the amazing tool. They're supercomputers. Yeah. In your pocket. I have a supercomputer. Shut up. At home. It I love when you just ignore me. <laughs> I really do. You, you've learned well. <laughs> uh, that's why my wife will tell people, just ignore him. <laughs> okay, so it says, In the beginning of a change, the patriot is a scarce man and, and brave, and hated and scorned. When his cause succeeds, the timid join him, for then it costs nothing to be a patriot. Mark Twain... We talk a lot about just doing the right thing, and that's really what makes all the difference, just doing the right thing. We always the right thing is to do. Why? Why? <laughs> oh, I love this. That's why we can't have nice things. <laughs> I'm sorry, continue. Doing the right thing. You were you were getting onto a really good topic, I could tell. <laughs> just switch. Yeah, just, just good. Good, you deserve that because it wasn't smoking before you put <laughs> snow in it, you jackass. <sighs> oh wow, look, it's really melted on there. I know, it melted on it pretty good. Okay. Um, but what, uh, what you were saying <laughs> is that we talk about how it's important to do the right thing. You may be, you may wonder like, why the hell are we listening to these people? They're not really talking very much. I don't think anybody does. And, and here's the thing, though. We're, we want you guys to know and to realize that... And this, maybe this is a terrible point to bring up right now. But the right thing <laughs> is rarely exciting. It's rarely like big whoop, you know, cheer. The right thing is just... It's, it's, it's boring. Usually... Oh, yeah, why would I do that? Well, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the right thing is usually boring. And that's why people don't like to do it. It's also usually not the easy thing. Yeah, that's right. And that's why it's, it's, the right thing's not usually sexy. It's not usually exciting and adventurous. It's, sometimes it is. Every now and then, it's, the right thing is cutting off a head. <laughs> Thanks, Nephi. Eventually, it will be. Mm hmm but the vast majority of the time the right thing is not the thing that is popular it's not the thing that's like it's it's not your your um, amazing Gucci gear man I'm crying now because of the sn smoke good but doing the right thing when it's boring and not popular and and all that 
makes it a lot easier to do the right thing when it is that big, grand, life-changing, world-changing thing. And if you haven't been in the practice of doing the right thing, when it didn't matter, well, it always matters to do the right thing, then you won't, you probably won't be able to do it or willing to do it when it is the time to be that person. That statement right there is so profound. And, then, and I hope you guys realize this. When, just when, when you don't, when, when it's not the, the popular thing, when doing the right thing is, is an easy thing, that's when we have to get used to it. I'm sorry, I was interrupting. I was super excited. No, you're good, because I was just playing melting snow. I got my poker super hot. <laughs> Poke the snow. <laughs> My wife, that's... my wife started watching these. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know if my wife's still watching them. <laughs> I don't watch them. Just like everybody else. If I had more time, I'd make them much, <laughs> much shorter. What? If I had more time, I'd make them much shorter. Yeah. I don't think they got watched much more with the one episode that you did break up. Well, I think I could have done better. There's always things you can do better. No. Let's don't just, try to Let's do, just complain and don't say... Don't ever try to be better. It's not worth it. <laughs> I've tried. Biggest waste of time ever. Just be <laughs> Sounds the raging... Sounds great. Does it work? That was awesome. <laughs> Sounds great. Doesn't work. <laughs> Not supposed to get set up. <laughs> Nancy! <laughs> oh, man. Just the thought of her possibly not being the speaker of the house anymore. Ooh, just makes me warm inside. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> what? I have Tourette's. Okay. So Potty mouth. I have Tourette's. No, you don't. Tourette's has you. <laughs> I don't have Tourette's. I just like. I love Jesus, but I also love to cuss. <laughs> How long have we been doing this one? I don't know. This one's been far more slow paced. Only like probably an hour and ten minutes. Do you want me to go look? I don't care. I'm not going over there. I don't want to go because Roxy's sitting on my... What do you call it? Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Now you're going to come over here. <laughs> oh, there's your person. There's like your human. human. An hour and 13 minutes. Man, I that told you. That was a good guess, Fred. I told you. It means we started at 9.30. Uh. I just put my head in the smokes. Well, that was dumb, wasn't it? You feel good? Yeah. Yeah. I do. <laughs> Thank you. Man, I love you, dog. You're okay. You Ooh, are a good. You are a good pooch. Sometimes when I'm with my kids, I'll sing, "Move, Roxy." Ha! <laughs> Cause she's a bitch. <laughs> My wife will get a chuckle, but she'll be like, you probably shouldn't do that. Because sometime my kids are going to hear that song, and they'll be like, oh, this is what my dad was singing. Oh! <laughs> oh, my dad's terrible. <laughs> I told you, did I tell you about when I uh, told Ashley she could swear? Yeah. She <laughs> told me that story a couple times. I can tell it again. <laughs> Oh, good. That means you like it. <laughs> <laughs> Did I get to the part where... <laughs> no, I do that, too. There you go. Oh. Oh. I should have brought some kind of treat for you, hon. Anyway. It's called my dog, hon. I might have to edit that part out. <laughs>
No. <laughs> I know one of Fred's hobbies. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is that? Bestiality. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. We shouldn't even laugh about that. I think it's funny. <laughs> but then again, I think a lot of things are funny that I shouldn't. <laughs> that's one of the reasons I'm going to hell. Ow! That was hot. <laughs> I had an itch on my leg and my pants because <laughs> I'm wearing thermals. Oh, no, so you don't. So, so my my pants and my thermals are just soaking up all that heat, and I started scratching my shin <laughs> and I burned myself. <laughs> so, anyway, um, yeah. What else? What else should we talk about? So, one of the things I was thinking of talking about is like the role, and this is this is um, we don't have to talk about this at all, but but we're going to. I guess we will. Yeah, the the role of of personal revelation because a lot of people. <laughs> I was talking to a friend recently, and we we're talking about like so for those. Me? Was it, it me? No, it wasn't. I said friend, but <laughs> the um, we are associates. <laughs> yeah, we, we we do a thing together. But uh, the <laughs> the podcast mm. I wasn't talking about any other things. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know where we're gonna go into this. But um, but so a lot of people like <laughs> in the church. There's 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 a few different um, ideas of like. O- obedience like there's there's a scripture that says obedience is the first law of heaven right and all other all other blessings are predicated upon obedience there's there's a law irre- irrevocably decreed in heaven and all other um, blessings are predicated on obedience to which the law that that has been predicated you know you something struck a chord in your mind but the the tone that it, that I'm trying to get across is there's a sense of you need to be absolutely obedient and we obviously need to be absolutely obedient to the Lord but obedience is um, itself is like one of those things where it's like we don't it's it's not it's we're, we're not encouraged to, to believe blindly there's if, if you look at like cult mentalities or like the ideas of, of you give all of your faith to an individual or a person and you you don't no longer think for yourselves and stuff that's not the that's not the mentality that's meant to be fostered to my understanding, I think that that's evil. Um, I believe that there are different gifts, spiritual gifts, and one of the gifts is to have the ability to believe on the testimony of others. And another spiritual gift is to receive your own testimony. And some some might consider one preparatory to the other, and I, I suspect that there's some truth to that, where you first have to hear the testimony, hear, hear what somebody else believes, and it strikes something in you where you're like, I, I don't know what's right or wrong, but I know that person believes that, and I, and I trust that person's that belief. And that's not bad, but it's also, you, you can't have that ignorance for yourself. You have to, at some point... You have to have your own testimony, because exactly. you can only live off of borrowed faith for so long. That, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. And... I surmised it. Thank you. But, but coming back to... the podcast. What? So that's the end of the podcast for this week. <laughs> um, Join us next week. Coming back to that, though, the idea of um, when the church has different policies or when the church has kind of coming back to how you said, if we're not doing the right thing, when it's easy to do the right thing, when it becomes that big, easier, easier to do the right thing, when it becomes that big flashy like, oh, you have to sell all your goods and we're going to move as a people, thinking of like the people getting when the church was, was started people were coming in from all over the world they were they were um, grouping in from Europe they were grouping in and they they were um, meeting together and they were coming to what they considered Zion and then the mobs kicked them out and they got kicked out of um, Kirkland they got kicked out of Nauvoo and they they just they they basically they were persecuted a lot and they had to come out here to, the, to the, the west the country and then when they were out here in the West, the U.S. government persecuted them as well. And it's just like, we've been, we've been, um, we've 
in the last hundred years, we've been relatively lowly persecuted, little, persecuted little, not not a ton, and it's been it's been easy to to practice your faith in in a relative manner. But um, one of the things that that Brigham Young said when when the saints came out here west is he said that we will come here to the west and we will be um, we we were. We were tried with poverty and with um, persecution, and here in the in the mountains, we will be tr- tried far more with with riches and wealth than we ever were before. And you see it today. How much of our how much of our um, trials come from our own own abundance? Are we are we treating others the way that we should, or are we like one of the like the city that I live in? What do they do with? Um, People that are that are poor, people that are homeless, they ship them down to Salt Lake, and the reasoning is, oh, because Salt Lake has better infrastructure to take care of them. And so what happens is you have people who are homeless, who are hiding from the authorities, hiding from the people who could help them, because the help that they're going to receive is to be shipped away, a bus ticket, a one-way bus ticket, down to the town to Salt Lake away from their family or away from their friends or away from anybody anything that they know the hobo code yeah and so you have people that um they'll 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 go into their um cars and they'll live in their cars and they'll freeze at night and they actually die they freeze to death in their cars or on the streets and because because they're trying to hide from the officials who would just send them away anyways and it's like oh how how christian is because they're an eyesore Exactly, and that's all that it is. It, it, that's exactly right. And there's there's a guy that that I'm. He's I one don't of my want to neighbors. see that. We shouldn't have to see that in our ivory tower. There's one of my neighbors who he's he's had some really hard. To- he's been through some really hard times. He's a good friend of mine, but he's 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 been um he's been into some heavy narcotics. He's been into like rough areas of his life, and he's cleaned up in a lot of ways. Eight hey, dog. He's cleaned up a lot of, of, of things. She's wrapped up. And he his anyways, his um Um still wrapped up. Oh don't She's do that. Another pet. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm wrapped up. Okay. Hopefully. Oh my goodness, dog! You are like the proverbial bull. <laughs> Go. Oh. Well, anyways, this friend of mine. What they're what he go? He's he's got a group that he goes and he um. His one of his. Uh. What do you call it? addiction support groups what they do is they go they have they go through and they'll systematically go through the different places that they know people have used to hide and stuff like that and they try and find them and they just approach them and get their story and find out from them and they don't turn them into the authorities (coughs) they actually try and help them but yeah my friend he's not (coughs) oh god block block he's not the um He's not what pe- most people would consider a model stu- citizen, because he's been through rough times, and I I, I think the world of him. He, he he literally he literally went down to Salt Lake and he, he, they they went and took um, backpacks and they got a bunch of these little cheap backpacks and they would put waters and toiletry they put water toiletries and some food in them and they went down to the to the homeless park and we're giving these out <coughs> to these homeless people he took his kids and stuff and it was just like why because they needed it and then as they were leaving this was this is a couple summers ago as they were leaving there was this young kid that was like 15 16 and he was <coughs> walking across the pavement and it's is blistering hot and he didn't have shoes on and he was he was he was an addict and he was in rough time, you know. But this guy, he he 
literally took his shoes off and gave them to the guy. And he's like, he tried, he's like doing everything he can to help him get back on his feet in, in a very literal sense, but also in a metaphorical sense. And then he went with his kids and they went on the front runner and they, they went home and he didn't have shoes on the rest of the day. And just because he didn't have them, you know, and it's like that kind of a, that kind of love for your fellow man earns far more, far more respect in my eyes than doing a group service project that nobody's really enthusiastic to do or, you know, it, it, that, that kind of love for your fellow man earns a lot more respect to me than, than the crossing the right, than looking good, than doing things that... I was about to ask, did he immediately tell the entire world what he did? No. Oh, that's not his, real charity. His kids told me. If you don't tell the world, <laughs> then, then then nobody's <laughs> going to know, and you didn't really do it. <laughs> but there's a story that I had with my dad where it's this affected me in a in a very profound way. Where I was I was just getting ready for my mission. This was before my mission, and we were it was actually when we were moving out of Bothwell. Sad day. And um the the we were we had been moving all day and we were just loaded up our last load and we were still there at our house and the the kid um we we were sitting there on the porch and we we could see maybe um maybe two miles down the road or whatever there was a truck coming and it had a trailer and was loaded to the brim full of like furniture and stuff my dad says to me he's and, and he said to me jokingly, and I knew he was joking knowing my dad, he said to me jokingly, he said, well, if we leave now, we won't have to help him. And, and I had just recently read Moroni 7, and Moroni 7 is such a beautiful chapter on charity and stuff like that. Um, but at the beginning of that chapter, I mean, it talks about a lot of different things. In the beginning of that chapter, it talks about how um, those who do good, like, you can tell between good and bad by their fruits and by like a good it specifically says a good um a good tree does not bear bad fruit and a bad tree does not bear good fruit type of a thing and then it says like if you give a gift unwillingly it'll be worse again worse worse for you in the long run like it says something to that effect and i quoted him this scripture was like well if, you, if we do this for these people and we don't want to do it it's actually worse for us and my dad kind of let me go off on my own little like, well, my, my self-righteous rant where I was basically like, if we're not going to, if, if we're going to do this just to do this and we're not actually meaning to do it, then it's, it's better that we don't do it at all. And it's better that we do leave type of a thing. And we were both exhausted. It was a long day, you know, <sighs> dog. <laughs> well, <coughs> the, 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 my dad just let me rant. And then we got um, the car pulled up, the truck pulled up, and it was full of stuff. It was, it was, they were coming there, just like my dad said. And the uh, husband gets out, and his wife gets out, and his wife's like eight months pregnant. Oh, good. She's able bodied. <laughs> and we helped them unload and stuff. And there was some big furniture that I don't think they would have been able to get unloaded if we hadn't have been there to help. And it felt really good to be able to help someone that needed it. And then. When we got back in the truck, my dad said something to me that I'll never forget. You're and, a piece of shit. <laughs> he said to me, he's like, Fred, he's like, you might be right. Maybe that is worse for us if we do something unwillingly. He's like, but you're missing the point. He's like, when we do something for someone else, we're doing it for them, not for us. And it was just like, it made me realize that like my whole mindset was like, oh, the blessings we're going to give, get, or the, the goodness that we're going to, like, look, do, you did it unto these things, you did it unto Christ. It's like, look how good that is for us. And that's a selfish attitude. When you do something for someone else, you need to do it for them, not for what it reflects on you. <laughs> and it's just like, what? Just thinking about how funny this conversation is. Just how ironic it is. You know what I mean? I'm just thinking, that's just what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's funny. <laughs> just because of that. And I mean, you're, you're, you're looking, you were looking at it and thinking about it, you know, correctly. Like the principle was, was correct and, and whatnot. But mm -hmm. you 
didn't have all the pieces. Yeah. So I'm just, that's, yeah. You miss the core thing. And it's like the, the scriptures that we read, you, a lot of times we think about it in relation to ourselves, but that's ultimately, it's not about us, you know? If we're, if we're, if we're trying to help someone, do something that's going to help them, not do something that's going to make you look good to the others or, you know. That's the only reason I do things. That's, that's because you don't do anything. It's better to not do anything than to do the wrong thing. <laughs> oh, jeez. And those of you who don't know Mitch, which I doubt anybody listening to this doesn't know Mitch, but um, those of you who don't know Mitch. You lucky buggers. He is... He's constantly an asshole, but doing nice things for people. <laughs> like, like legitimately, yeah, legitimately nice people. Ago, you're an asshole, but you're genuine. <laughs> <laughs> genuine asshole. Oh, it's great. Like, that's, I think that's one of the things that I've always loved about <clears throat> your attitude is like, <laughs> you, you try to, you, you kind of try to get away with being nice by you cover it up by being a jerk <laughs> i don't know i don't know if that makes sense or if that's accurate but knowing me as long as you have and knowing my personality and and all that spoiler you love christmas i do love christmas um how how often am i really just like genuinely mean very rarely and the thing is, like, you're, you're fairly often, you're ornery, but it's usually not, like, directed at anybody. It's usually just, I hate everything. <laughs> and then when somebody, when you're put into a situation where someone needs help or something like that, then you, then that, that, that heart that you have, that's three sizes too small, grows <laughs> by two sizes that day. <laughs> So, are you saying that that's why it's important to be going back to what we were talking about before we were talking about how I'm a dick? <laughs> are you saying that's why it's important to be pure in heart? As far as helping other people and doing things, not doing it because this is, this is the blessing that I'll receive, but doing it because in your heart you care and you love and you just want to help people yeah is that why it's important to be pure in heart yeah because when you think about it and when the reason when the motivation that you have for helping others is so that you reflect good on what you do or like so you shine good and and even that i'm not saying that that's necessarily a bad motivation because it's like oh i want to do the right thing to to inspire others that's not bad i mean there's 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 motives but that's depend that's depending on who you want to look good yeah if you're doing it so that you look good you might want to rethink that because that's like the pharisees yeah the pharaohs the pharaohs of the seas and they're sad you see the pharisees and sadducees um, no so uh, that's you know we we do we harp on doing the right thing a lot but we should probably harp on doing the right thing for the right reason. Yeah. Not just doing the right thing for the sake of, you know, look at me. Look how amazing I am. But doing it because it's the right thing to do. And then not, don't tell people that you're doing the right thing. Let them see it. Once if that makes sense. Let, let people see that you're doing the right thing, but don't be boastful. There's a, there's a I saying... what I'm getting at. I don't, I don't know. There's a saying that I really like. Do whatever you want. About, um, I think that a parent said this to their kid, and I don't remember where I heard this from. <laughs> Sorry I'm leaning back. It's because the smoke's in my face and I'm crying. But um, the, the saying is, basically, the kid was like, oh, telling his, his parents, and oh, look at all this thing I did good. Look at this, I did good. Look at this, I did good. And they would tell everybody, oh, I, my parents taught me this, and I did this, and isn't that good? Isn't that good? And the parent was basically like, don't praise yourself because I want to be the one who praises you. It's like, let me do that. You just be yourself. 
don't sit there and worry about what other people because when when we sit there and try and like make sure that other people notice the things that we're proud of it's not bad to do things that are good like you don't want to discredit that but you also don't want to do things that are good solely for the praise it's the only reason I do anything <laughs> and when in in a in a social setting when you don't praise yourself it makes it far more meaningful when others can praise like others praise you and it's like I don't know and and again you have to be careful I, I loved so Heber J. Grant was a um, Latter-day Prophet that is probably one of my favorites but he had a there was a thing that he used to do when people would come to him and they'd be like oh you gave this talk and it was so meaningful and it was so important and so precious like I don't know pra giving him praise or whatever oh you did this and oh you know he'd be like he'd, he'd be he'd be polite and he'd be like thank you and as soon as the person would walk away he'd like elbow the person next to him and be like devil talk devil talk that'll get you proud right there that's devil talk <laughs> and it's like his attitude <laughs> was so down to earth with like you know if 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 we let Satan's going to try and get pride into our hearts any way he can and if we let him then then he's he's won <clears throat> so just a minute ago you were talking about um, personal revelation not being slothful so I want to I want to share this because we quickly got off topic. Sorry. <laughs> Probably my fault. All your, it was your fault. All your fault. Not mine. <laughs> because I do the right thing for the right reason. Only. Only. <laughs> and so people notice it. Take note of that. <laughs> so this is a quote by <clears throat> from Ezra Taft Benson. <clears throat> The prophet Joseph Smith declared it will be the elders of Israel who will step forward to help save the Constitution, not the church. And have we elders been warned? Yes, we have. And have we elders been given the guidelines? Yes, indeed, we have. And besides, if the church should ever inaugurate a program, who do you think would be the f in the forefront to get it moving? It would not be those who were sitting on the sidelines prior to that time, or those who were appeasing the enemy. It would be those choice spirits who, not waiting to be commanded in all things, used their own free will, the counsel of the prophets, and the spirit of the Lord as guidelines, and who entered the battle in a good cause <clears throat> and brought to pass much righteousness in freedom's cause. I love that. Yeah, it's pretty good. It shows that, like, we... It shows that we've been given all that we need. But it also shows that, like, we're not going to... We're not going to... Start from scratch. Like, the, the church is not going to be the one that tells us, Okay, you need to go do this. We have to start... We have to start the 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 motion ourselves we have to be involved in defending the constitution constitution ourselves and that's such a valuable thing it's such we, an important thing we have to love and value freedom yeah and i've said it a million times before i'll probably say it a million times again um Let me get my scripture so I can more accurately, so I can accurately quote it. From Alma chapter 60. No, oh, there it is. Mosiah. It's almost like we're in Alma um, chapter 60 right now. Yeah. <clears throat> Behold, it is time, yea, the time is now at hand, that except ye do to 
bestir yourselves in the defense of your own, of your country and your little ones. The sword of justice doth hang over you. Yea, and it shall fall upon you and visit you even to your utter destruction. Bestir yourself in the defense of your selves and your country, even your little ones. It's important to love and cherish freedom and it's important to be involved in, <coughs> in ensuring that it's passed down it's not just a convenient thing to have harm it and regulate it far too much. The fact that you should have to ask permission to do practically anything is, uh, you know, how bad it's gotten. I don't know. I don't know how to convey the point that I'm trying to make. It's it's sad because my wife she's she's seen the effects of like she grew up in the effects of communism she grew up in the effects of a corrupt government and she loves her country she loves Romania and man I love it too but the people the people who try to control others they ruin it and she's just this week it's been it's been sad to see how she, there have been several times where she's like this isn't america and she's right and she's and she's she's someone who's she's like she she, she points it out she's like i don't want to go back to that place where i came from where you have to like there was there was forced vaccinations in romania there was there was um for for instance during communism Ceausescu, the dictator, he had this idea of of um, genetics where he thought if there are more babies born, there's going to be more super geniuses. So he made it illegal. Any forms of contraception were illegal, and he and he did everything he could to promote lots and lots of babies. And there were women that were um, they were getting tons of like a lot of women dying from like these back alley abortions and stuff like that which is terrible as well but then the the state had a control of all of these orphanages is where it's like if you don't want your kid it's okay we'll take them you know and lucky kids no it's well yeah that's i understand you but it's just terrible it, the the romania is the, one of the classes my wife's been taking is a um, young childhood development class specifically focusing on ages zero to three years old and Romania has been brought up multiple times in this textbook that she's going over really? as, as bad examples, yes. And, and, and they, they've gone into the... Um, Be proud of where you come from. Oh, it's, it's really heartbreaking. I'm, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. It, my, so there's still today, there's these orphanages in Romania. And there was this... She showed me this video. My, my wife showed me this video of this kid that they, they, they picked him up and took him out of his crib and... He looked like a three-year-old or something, you know? And it was like the first time he had been out of his crib in his life. The kid was 11. He was either 10 or 11. And the, the physical body of a three-year-old. And, and the, the thing that they were illustrating in this, the, this book is how the, the lack of physical interaction physically stunts the growth of the individual. The kid was, was like a 10 or 11-year-old and in, in pretty much the body of like a three-year-old who had never really been out of his crib and it's just like these the the, the if you want to see corruption even after communism and stuff like that in romania the way that you would have to get when you went to the hospital the nurses would not change your bandages unless you paid them under the table 
and then they change your bandages. There's so much, so much problems with, and not every nurse is like my, my wife, one of her best friends, she broke her leg and the guy, the, 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 he, the husband was really wealthy. And so he paid off a lot of the doctors and they, she got good, great treatment. There's some great doctors and stuff in Romania, but you have to pay for it. And then when she got to the physical therapist, the, the, the guy tried to get the, to pay off the physical therapist. And he's like, what are you doing? I get, I get paid for this. And, and he was the, he was the absolute best doctor she had worked with. He helped her learn to walk again, basically. And, and he's like, he, he did it because he loved it and he was passionate about it. And you have, you have this goodness in the people there, but they've been so beaten down time and time again. And it's just like, you take a population that, that has goodness in them and you just bastardize that goodness and you use that over and over again and it destroys goodness. And that's what we're fighting right now. You look at the, you look at the corruption that's going on in our government right now. It's trying to destroy your goodness. Don't let it. Don't let it. We, we the people, <clears throat> we stick together. You help each other out. You help your fellow citizens. American is, is really, you have to be, you have to be, be it. You can't, those people who, who love America are the people who understand that the American people are those who, who believe truly that all men are created equally, that all men are, have rights that are inalienably given from God. You can't take away somebody's ability to say what they want to say. You can't take away somebody's ability to protect themselves. They can do that. No matter, like, you, yeah, you can, you can hurt them. You can enslave them. But... You can even kill them. You can even kill them. But the American spirit is a spirit of freedom. And that's, that's something that they're trying to, to, to um, desensitize us to. And it's just not... It, it's up to us whether it, they do it or not. But that's how you that's how you fight is you live for freedom and you live you outlive the evilness. Yeah, um, look at <clears throat> look at what they say about the masks. Wearing a mask is a patriotic thing to do. Doing this or doing that, sacrificing your freedoms, that's a patriotic thing to do. What? That's a lie. That doesn't sound anything like the freedom that I understand. They try and play it and work it against the rest of us that still view ourselves as patriots. And not just like a Sunday morning sunshine patriot. Like a lot of people. It's the true patriots who are willing to to fight and to die. To carry that cross, so to speak. <laughs> I think the even the Boston Tea Party, such a it's such a monumental thing that that started our really was one of the catalysts to the revolution. That oh, good old Sam Adams. Yeah, that was not a a peaceful act. They broke in and they um, they didn't kill a single person. Yeah, they didn't even hurt. Anybody. It wasn't it, it wasn't violent in the sense of like harming people, but they destroyed property. Oh yeah, they destroyed the, those those goods that people counted on. You know, it was civil disrupt. Di, dis what do you call it? Disobedience. Disobedience. And you think of why why it was so meaningful. It was saying that we don't care. We're not gonna we're not gonna indulge in the things that we want because we care about our freedom more. That's one of the things that's so powerful to that to me about that. Is that they're they're giving up their they're giving up the the opportunity to have that to have have a commodity because they care more about freedom. What commodities would we give up today? Not my guns. That's not a commodity. That's true. That's true. I don't know. When I was overseas, we had to do without a lot. So, 
There's a lot of things that I could do without. But I live here, and it's readily available. It's just easy and convenient, a lot of things. And that's really all it is. A lot of things that we have are just easy and convenient things. Mm -hmm. I was thinking we, about this. We need very, very little to survive. Even on like a technical sense, one of the things that gives Google so much power is for instance their authentication so authentication is when you say you you, you basically you open up like you sign in to to your gmail or you sign into your your a service that's online right that's called authentication google provided a, a service where anybody can register with google and then when someone goes to your website you just say sign in with your own google account and that person who already has a Google account, they don't have to fill out the, the account work of like creating an account with you. They just, Google sends you their information and they don't have to remember a new password or anything. They just sign in with Google, right? Super There's, convenient. It's super convenient. It makes it so, so nice to implement as a developer because you're like, okay, I don't need to find ways to get all this information. I don't need to store it. I don't need to protect it. That's all done by Google. What that also does is it means that when somebody doesn't want to, when Google doesn't like somebody, Google can cut them out of anything that they've used to authenticate through Google. It's a convenience that we give, we, we willingly take part in, and it gives Google power. The government does this all the time. Businesses do this all the time. They provide a service for free that eventually becomes something that's pretty much essential. You look at right now, the there's coin shortages all over the country. Oh, these coin shortages. Let me ask you, why has there not been coin shortages before? Coin shortages, if, if, you're, if you're paying attention at all, it seems very obvious that these coin shortages are for the purpose of getting people to use cards more often. Nobody will talk about this, but... Wait, we gotta get our tinfoil hats for this one. <laughs> the cashless society so when you dissent they just turn off your money exactly that's exactly right well people don't realize this there have been people that have been on like they platforms like like patreon and stuff like that that have been um and this is this happened this happened like two like a year and a half ago or something like that i remember somebody i wasn't even a i wasn't even following this person this specific person but i remember somebody got kicked off of patreon and the only explanation that was given was i don't remember if it was visa or chase bank it was one of the it was one of the major like banking corporations said we're not allowed to do this for you anymore and because that because that um that banking organization that financial institution said no patreon had to stop services to this this individual and it's like why can a financial institution do that and why this, do lobbyists get law passed yet our letters are meaningless because green paper speaks louder than white paper And then, then, you, then you start realizing, oh, maybe the day of the rope's not that far off. Which is not a threat to anybody. So don't construe it that way, Agent Douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a threat. Good job. Good job. For, for making sure that I, I clarify. Cover our asses. That sounds like it's... Oh, he took it away. He said it's not a threat. We'll just edit out that part. I mean, it works great for... Insert anybody that has been taken out of context. Yeah. Well, at least you have the original, I guess. Yep. Well, that's just... That's just the thing. If... The whole... The whole thing that we're trying to do is accomplish means peacefully um, I don't advocate violence unless violence is forced upon you you know advocate we definitely advocate the what, what's the right way to say that competence in protection yeah self-protection like you're you have a firearm have a good one and know how to use it. the protection of yourself and your family is your responsibility 
you should you should take that seriously. And the Republic. What? And the Republic. And the protection of the Republic, you mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's amazing to me how the Constitution, we, everybody, everybody will agree that the Constitution is the highest law of the land, but yet most of the laws that affect our lives have nothing to do with the Constitution. Yep. It's really quite amazing. <laughs> yeah. What time is it? 11.25. Okay, we gotta go. We do? Well, I wanted to be back earlier for my... I wanted to be, spend more time with my family today. If you don't think that that's important... Um, I do not. You're a terrible person. And I think that you probably... Um, okay. This thinking of mean things is kind of hard. Not really. Depends. You smell funny. You've been sitting by a fire. It's different. Not in a good way. It's uh, great. Have fun. Don't let anybody rain on your parade. When rain when on you, other people's parades. <laughs> when you go out and don't wear a mask. And you see people like worried or offended or, or in like fearful, realize that they're in hell. Like they're, they're literally trying to justify their own fear. I have to wear a mask. Why do you think you don't have to? You don't have to wear a mask. Stop being a puss. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty I, easy. It, I've been amazed how many people have told me and like people that I like respect and know have been like, oh, you'll have to wear a mask to go in there. <laughs> I'm like, I won't. We'll see. <laughs> it's like, what are they going to do? And 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 you don't have to be rude or belligerent or anything. You just simply say like, N I'm I'm not going to do that. No, thank you. And like, and then just when it comes down to it, it's just an ultimatum. It's like, do you need me to go somewhere else? So I need to go buy my groceries down the store street. I can do that. And mm -hmm. and they'll money talk. Like you said, money talks. And they'll never. I want don't want to leave. cause any problems, but I can go somewhere else. Yeah. Well, no, it's okay. It's okay. Just make sure you social distance. It's like, I've been doing that since before it was cool. I actually prefer that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was down in Salt Lake. I was waiting for people to ask me. Nobody did. Nobody people asked are, you. People are cowards. They, and that's the thing is they are cowards. And it's like they're living in in a in the this this prison inside their mind and it's like you don't have to do that, you know? Like, you are you don't have to be in that fear and that, like, ah, oh, you, you'll be okay. Life will go on. They'll give me a ticket. No, they won't. They won't give you a ticket. <laughs> I wear it for my mom. No, you don't. You do it because you're a coward. <laughs> well, I could I could give it to somebody that I care about and they could die. Yeah, you, your brakes could go out and you could crash into their living room and run them over in the comfort of their own home. What's your point? Bad Shit things happen. happens all the time. <laughs> How many people die from being in the wrong spot at the wrong time? I can tell you that I've seen it a lot of times. You took a step left when you, took, when you, when you could have taken a step right, you'd still be alive, but you didn't. People die. It's like not this brand new concept. It's been happening for quite a while. It's 2020. Nobody realized this, but people die. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Serious? People have been dying since the dawn of time. How stupid are you? It's kind of what you sign up for when you're born. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Just, if I had hair, I would pull it out. They could die. Yeah. It's kind of the risk we of living. Could, we could all die. Well, that's just the thing. If you stop if you stop doing things because you're afraid you're going to get hurt or sick or die, are you really living? I mean, I, I don't know. Well, 
I'd rather live dangerously and be free than <coughs> be caged and not be free. I don't know if this is exactly accurate, but it seems like, wasn't it France who immediately surrendered to Germany during one of the world wars because they were like, it's better that we surrender than any of our citizens die or something like that? I don't know. I don't really study much about the French. Well, the thing that comes to my mind... I know that they built quite the border protection because, you know, during World War I, the Germans just ran over the border. So the Germans spent all this time building this, you know, um, fort and this wall mm -hmm. along their border for in case Germany wanted to try it again. World War II comes and they just fly over it. <laughs> oh, that feels bad. Feels bad, man. Well, I have a hard time feeling bad for anybody who's not willing to fight. That's I don't know if that's accurate, what I said, but that's what it seems like. That's where I'm at in my life. Well, most of the time, with most things, we are victim only of our own stupidity or our own neglect. Masks are for Frenchmen. Yeah, nobody wants to be French. I suspect the French don't even want to be French. <laughs> Uh, their moral superiority. And that's another thing. Like, there's so many people who think that America should be more like Europe. One of my brothers thinks that America should be more like Europe. It's like, no, Europe sucks. They're cowards. And that's the thing, is like, a lot of Europe views Americans as fat, stupid Americans. <laughs> you know what? There are a lot of fat, stupid Americans. And so it's like it's it's hard to it's 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 easy to create stereotypes for other groups and it's it's oftentimes there's a lot of truth to it but anytime you try and use a stereotype to understand an individual it's like you're just setting yourself up for being made a fool <laughs> look all the stereotypes about mormons wow how many wives do you have i have one jackass <laughs> Really? Yeah, the same laws that apply to you apply to me. <laughs> Which telling somebody that they can only have one wife is unconstitutional. It is. Not that I am an advocate of plural marriage. I would never do it. <laughs> Ever. Even, even when it was a part of the church, it was actually very... not not a huge part. But it's one of those things that, like, there's, there's always, there's always things that are, don't make sense or don't, you know, like, there's, 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 oh, I mean, what I'm saying is, some people will be like, oh, it, it saved the people because, like, you had persecutions and husbands were, were, you had a lot of widows and stuff like that, and there is some truth to that, but that doesn't count for all the stories, but you also have things that, like, I don't know, there's, there's always things that, like, people try to find they try to find reasons in the, and and we do this in general where we try to find we dig dig until we find something that makes sense to us and then we accept it you dig dig and make find something that makes sense to us and it's like when you when you see things for for in a lot of different perspectives there are a lot of different perspectives that are valid given the right given the right information but that doesn't mean that any one of those is necessarily the right perspective yeah. I agree. Are you getting your... Oh, I thought you were getting your gun. No, it's right there. How about you? Don't worry about what I'm doing. I just did that. It's, it's easy to... I don't know. It's easy to think that we, we've got it figured out. We're all, we all fall victim to this. To think that we've got it figured out and the 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 truth is always going to be true god's ways are not man's ways and it's hard to 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 accept that but when it's all said and done 
there is a level of faith. We have to we have to have a, a personal connection with God, and with that personal connection with God, it makes it so that we can actually have faith. Faith is one of those things that, yeah, there there's a la- layer of blind faith, but that's not the. I don't think that that's the end game, and I don't think God wants us to to live our lives based off of blind faith. I think He wants us to to use faith to grow little by little, line upon line, precept upon precept, and that's that's how that's how we grow in in, in our natural lives. You know, you learn when you're lifting weights, you have to start with a little weight, and then you get bigger and you get bigger. When you're running, you have to run only so fast, but then you get faster and you get faster. When you're learning how to do some trade or skill, you have to start with the basics and you get more complex and you get harder and you get more. I always start at advanced level. You always fail at advanced level before you go back to the basics? No, I just start out at advanced. Well, I wake up in the morning and I piss excellence. Yeah, yeah. You Uh, get it. What is this? Oh, more bump. Yeah, life is life is so full of opportunities for us to grow, and it's just up to us to to listen and seize those opportunities. And nobody's going to make us do that. It's just our choice. The the every time we make a choice, every time we we make a choice to do something that's that's right, it makes it easier for the next choice to do something that's right. And that's just that's the nature of life. <laughs> blah 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 okay I read through a little bit of the Constitution um, the section 2 I mean article 2 section 2 do we want to read it yeah okay I see smoke is in your eyes you want me to go it's not in my eyes anymore okay you read it then go if I could read. (laughs) The President, Section 2, the President shall be Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy of the United States and of the Militia of the several states. When called into the actual service of the United States, he may require the opinion in writing of the principal officer in each of the executive departments upon any subject relating to the duties of their respective offices. And he shall have power to grant reprieves and pardons for offenses against the United States except in cases of impeachment. He, he shall have Sorry. You want to keep reading? Who do you think you are? He shall have power by and with the advice and consent of the Senate to make treaties provided two-thirds of the senators present concur. And he shall nominate and by and with the advice and consent of the Senate shall appoint ambassadors, other public ministers, and consuls, judges of the Supreme Court, and all other officers of the United States who, whose appointment are not herein otherwise provided for, provided for and which shall be established. Congress may by law vest the appointment of such inferior offices, officers as they think proper in the president uh, in the president alone in the courts of law or in the heads <coughs> of departments the president shall have power to fill up all vacancies that may happen during the recess of the senate by granting commissions which shall expire at the end of their next session. There's only two more. It's only a model. What? That was what is that on? Camelot. Camelot. No, Camelot. that's not Camelot. It's only a model. It's Monty Python on the Holy Grail. I know that they're saying, they saying Camelot. Camelot. Yeah. It's only a model. <laughs> I was asking what movie it was. Good idea, oh Lord! Of course it's a good idea! <laughs> <laughs> okay, section three. 
You want to talk about anything in Section 2, though? There is where it states that the president is the commander-in-chief, and that's that's one of the things that has been um, used to let the president uh, go to war without Congress for... and. Um, not necessarily go to war, to go into conflicts that are not declared wars without Congress. Section 3. He shall from... Oh, one of the things that I wanted to point out, though. I thought it interesting how um, the Congress may by law vest at the appointment of such inferior officers as they... As they as they think proper in the president alone, in the courts of law, or in the heads of department. So Congress can, and this is referring to the people in the cabinets of the, the cabinet of the president, see, right? The heads of different, the department heads. I would believe so. Section 3. He shall from time to time give to the Congress information of the State of the Union and recommend to their consideration such measures as he shall judge necessary and expedient. He may in extraordinary occasions convene both houses or either of them and in case of disagreement between them the respect to the to the time of adjournment he may adjourn them to see to such time as he shall think proper he shall receive ambassadors and the public ministers he shall take care that the laws be fulfilled be faithfully executed and shall commission all of the officers of the united states So the president can convene an adjourned Congress. Um, yeah, on under extraordinary measures, yeah. but yeah, so like a uh, no, what's it called? A time of emergency. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I was I was looking up, so I was I was um watching something on. The different ways that they... So I was talking about judges and how they appoint judges and how, like, uh, the president appoints a judge and Congress um, has... The Congress, uh, what do you call it, does their hearing and stuff like that. And it, basically, there's different ways. If Congress is not in session, then the... Um, the if they're not in session, then the president... <clears throat> Um, they'll appoint a judge, and that judge doesn't need to go through the, the process of hearing for until the next time the Congress is in she- uh, until after the next time the Congress is in session. So they have a time where they're in session. And- Unfortunately, the end of this video did not make the cut. Battery killed, and so we lost the last little bit of this. But thanks for listening. Have a good day.